Hey there, functional medicine practitioners. A lot of people are running the urinary organic acid test today in order to come up with nutritional interventions and therapeutics for their patients and clients. But should we be running this test if there are some inaccuracies on them? So let's go ahead and take a look. Now there's a whole bunch of markers on these tests and therefore there's a whole bunch of markers that we could take a critical look at. We're just gonna look right now, look at succinate, part of the citric acid cycle or the Krebs cycle or the tricarboxylic acid cycle. So let's take a look at uh, succinate or succinic acid. If you look at the title of this paper alone, Rethinking Succinate, that's a good start, an unexpected hormone-like metabolite in energy homeostasis. Well, right there without looking at any more, I think that we could pretty much rule that out as a very useful urinary marker if it has some metabolic uh, activities. But let's take a look at what the paper says. We now know that extracellular levels of succinate are both relevant and dynamic. Well, that's not good for testing purposes. Extracellular levels of succinate transiently increase in response to acute physiological adaptations such as exercise, food ingestion, and cold exposure. Again, not perfect for uh, testing purposes, but let's continue. By contrast, chronic inflammatory metabolic disorders such as obesity, type 2 diabetes, and liver disease are associated with a persistent elevation of extracellular succinate, which boosts the inflammatory response, wow, and even disturbs its physiological function. So this thing has activity. Uh, Lastly, they go on to say, the source of this circulating succinate remains elusive. That's not good if you're using it in order to be able to diagnose, let's say, a mitochondrial issue uh, or some kind of nutritional deficiency if, if somebody has too much or too little succinate. Uh, but both peripheral tissues and gut microbiota might con contribute. That's not good. Let's just take a quick look at another marker here. Here's vitamin B6 or pyridoxine or uh, pyridoxic acid. And according to this paper, pyridoxic urinary pyridoxic acid excretion is, number one, inversely associated with protein intake. So the more protein that you consume, the more it's going to influence your urinary B6 status. It also is affected by the quality of protein. Well, that's kind of difficult then when you're trying to interpret this test. A measure of recent vitamin B6 intake, which makes sense, However, it's lower in female than males, and most of these labs that I know of don't have a specific quanti uh, quantification for male and females. It isn't influenced by a riboflavin deficiency, which becomes problematic when you're trying to identify why it might be elevated or low. And therefore, this paper says, because of all these reasons, its use as a marker of vitamin B6 status has been discouraged. Now, that's just a couple of markers that we could look at of this thing. But generally speaking, assuming that the organic acid test laboratory that you're using is accurate, and I personally think that most of these are pretty accurate if you do split lab testing. Um, however, only a handful of the markers appear to have any kind of clinical utility. And therefore, why are we spending all that money or our patients' money on so many of the markers when many of them are highly questionable at best and only a handful of them actually have some clinical utility? And most cases, practitioners don't know which ones are good and which ones are not. So... As for right now, I think that the urinary organic acid test, though really cool, really cool looking and very exciting, doesn't have much of a place in a functional medicine or nutritional clinical practice. If you like this kind of information and want to learn more, check out metabolicfitnesspro.com. God bless.